Hi again, marketing research students and SPSS users. In this tutorial, we're going to again use our Spring 2014 craft beer data set, and we're going to learn how to do two-box scoring. What is two-box scoring? This is the exercise we're doing today. Two-box scoring is pretty simple. It's a case where we take any interval scaled um, <clears throat> question, typically a, a Likert scale, so a one to five will be a good example where we often do two-box scoring. And we simply take the data that was originally scored from a 1 to 5, or 1 to 10, 1 to 11, doesn't matter. And we take a box of the highest two scores, and we recode the data so that those two highest scores are now indicated by a 1, and all the remaining scores are indicated as a 0. Now, why do marketing researchers often do this? Now, from an academic standpoint, this type of recoding often makes um, academic researchers quite angry. We have a nice, rich, continuous scale here, and then for some reason we're simplifying it down into a simple zero and one. This bothers us. We're losing information. We have this nice, rich information. Now we're collapsing into two categories. But in practical marketing research, the simplification usually can aid in communication. Let's see the example that we're going to do here today. So we're in our data set. Let's take a look at our variable view. And let's take a look down here at our lifestyle question. So uh, this should be the 21st variable in your data set. We asked people, again on the Likert scale, uh, how much do they agree with the following statement? I consider myself a craft beer enthusiast. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take these people that, that agreed or strongly agreed and recode them as a 1 and recode anyone else as a 0. The intuition here is that anybody who said they were a four and five is in fact someone who believes they're a craft beer enthusiast, which is potentially very interesting to marketers who care about craft beer consumption. And if you strongly disagree, disagree or are neutral on the matter, from, a mark, from an applied marketing standpoint, we can code you as a zero, all, in other words, group you all together, because we're pretty much, we think of you all the same way. It doesn't matter to us whether, that you, whether you strongly disagree or merely somewhat disagree or partly disagree or just disagree, you're not a craft beer consumer. So from an applied marketing research standpoint, the two-box score does have some merit. But as the academic, I can't help myself but mention the limitations. Okay, so it's pretty easy to do the two-box scoring. We simply use our transform, recode into different variables. This takes one variable and turns it into a new variable based on some criteria. So we'll scroll down here and we will look for our variable lifestyle craft beer enthusiast. There's a question mark here in the output variable. We have to give it a new name. I'll call this lifestyle underscore craft beer two box. And I won't give it a label for now. I could give it a value label, but I'm going to be a little lazy. Don't tell anyone. I hit change here. Now I have my new variable name. Now I need to set up the conditions, the old and new values. So we'll use the range function here. If Originally, someone scored a 1 through 3 on the old scale. The new code we want them to be is a 0. However, if they scored a 4 or 5, they agree on this scale or strongly agree. We're going to recode them as a 1. Add this. OK, and then what are we going to do with all the remaining values? Any all other values, which means they were missing for some reason, there might be some other errors in the data set, um, we will turn that into system missing. So anything else? will be treated as missing data. All right. So our setup is pretty good. This should work quite well for us. Let's hit continue. We want to save our syntax. We'll hit paste this time. Sure enough, there's our syntax. You might have a slightly different number here if you have multiple data sets open. I only have one data set open, so it defaulted. I could actually delete this since I only have one data set open. It'll run this code on the only data set that's available. So lifestyle craft beer enthusiast, one through three turns into zero, four through five turns into one, all else turns into system missing, into our new variable, period. So that syntax is pretty easy to understand. We can select this syntax, right click, we can run the selection, or if we ran all, we only have three lines in our whole syntax file right now. So we'll run the selection. Sure enough, it says that I ran some syntax. And let's see what we have here. If we go all the way to our data view, all the way to the far right, we should see a, some missing data, no surprise. But we also have numerous uh, 0 and 1 scores. A lot of missing data here. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on. 
We had a bunch of non-responses to this lifestyle question. Huh? Sure enough, it worked hey, correctly. And let's see again quickly how these two sort of variables can be understood. Uh, again, I'm sorry, I ran analyze descriptive frequency. Let's do a simple frequency table. Let's grab our lifestyle question, the original variable. Let's grab our new one. Display frequency tables, statistics. Let's ask for the mean. You can ask for the standard deviation. And for charts, let's ask for a bar chart expressed in percentages. Okay, we'll run these. And I told you the whole point of a uh, two box score is that it simplifies our analysis, we can make segmentation a little easier. So we look here at the lifestyle question, we see a, a relatively even mix of people who strongly disagree to strongly agree regarding craft beer. Uh, the mode is agree. For our two box score, we can say that of our valid respondents, 55% uh, of the respondents did not indicate themselves to be a craft beer enthusiast, so they disagreed or were neutral, where at least some, they agreed to strongly agree to most 45% of our respondents. So only being two possible categories here does simplify the analysis a bit, and it also simplifies the chart. Here we can see it. And you'll notice that in this particular chart, we have the value label showing. In the new lifestyle two box variable that we made, we only see zero and one. We don't see any value labels. Why are there no value labels? Well, that's because we didn't plug any value labels in. If we wanted to fix that, we could use syntax. We could actually use code, or we could go to variable view, go to our brand new variable, which is here, lifestyle two box score, go to values, and we could type in some scores for zero and one. So zero means not craft beer in. We could add in another one for one. There we go. Okay, so that's our really quick introduction into doing two box scoring. Um, it's a very simple procedure. It's very common in applied marketing research, and you should always just keep the term two box score in the back of your head. Uh, as an analyst, as a marketing analyst, you will hear that term come up almost inevitably.